Hello there. This is Elisa Rome from Connor Prairie, and I want to talk to you about letters. Now, think back to the last time that you wrote a letter. Was it a few months ago? A year ago? <laughs> Maybe a few years ago? Now, personally, I remember writing letters all the time as a kid. I remember postcards from my grandma describing the Texas summer, or letters sent back and forth with my cousins all the way in Alaska. But, like most of you, I'm sure, it's been quite a long time since I last sat down to write a letter. It's not that I don't keep in contact with those people anymore. I just do it differently now. With social media, text messaging, video calls, and phone calls, staying in touch is easier than it's ever been before. With letter writing falling by the wayside, and more and more magazines and newspapers appearing online, going to the mailbox each day usually just leaves us with a bunch of junk. Getting the mail just isn't an exciting event anymore. But for most of our history, letters have been incredibly important, especially during difficult times. They carried news and helped people connect with their loved ones far away. And never in our history has this been more evident than during the Civil War. The Civil War was a huge historic event that affected almost every person in the United States. From the very beginning, it was clear that mail was going to be important for both the Union and the Confederacy. In fact, mail was so important that the Confederacy established a postal service on February 21st, 1861, almost a month and a half before the war even started. Looking back, it's pretty clear that the mail was on nearly everybody's mind throughout the Civil War. For proof of that, look no further than Little Women, the beloved classic novel by Louisa May Alcott. Published just three years after the end of the war, some of the most famous scenes from the book are of the March sisters, huddled around their mother's chair, listening to her read letters from their father on the front lines. For many American families, like the March family, letters became an exciting event. Many young men who had never left their hometowns suddenly found themselves fighting a war on the other side of the country, far from the friends and family who had surrounded them all of their lives. Letters helped them feel closer to home. But those same letters also help us understand what their lives were like so long ago. What did they do with their days? How did they feel about the war? How did they feel being so far from their friends and family? The letters they wrote help us answer these questions. Some letters helped soldiers convey news and information, like this letter from Private Duncan Barnhill to his brother on April 26, 1864. He tells his family he has been denied leave to come visit them, and closes the letter with warm wishes, saying, Give my love to mother, and tell her I want to see her the worst in the world. Other letters helped families feel close, even when they were far apart. In this letter from Martha Poteet to her husband Francis on June 16, 1864, she announces the birth of their newest baby daughter. She tells her soldier husband, I know you want to see your sweet little baby. I would be very glad to see you if I could, but I can't. She also encloses a paper tracing of their infant daughter's hand. Even in the middle of a war, letters allowed this soldier to feel like he was back with his family, if only for a moment. Letters can tell us so much about how people coped with difficult events in the past, but they can also help us tell the story of the hardships that we face today. Now, I know a lot of us are probably feeling pretty isolated right now. We might be separated from coworkers, friends, and family, but maybe by taking a cue from the past, we can connect with our loved ones and tell our stories by writing a letter. Now, my challenge to you is this. I want you to think of one person that you would really like to talk to right now and write them a letter. Think about all the things you might include in that letter. Will you describe your home and the neighborhood around you, like the soldiers who describe the scenery around them in camp? Maybe you'll talk about the things that happened to you today, like the families back on the home front who describe daily life on the farm. You could even include a keepsake, maybe a photograph or a drawing for your loved ones to enjoy much like Martha Poteet sending the paper cutout of her baby's hand. When your letter is finished, please be sure to share it with us. Post pictures of yourself writing or mailing your letter so you can inspire others to write a letter and connect with the ones they care about. And who knows, maybe one day your letter will help historians learn more about the people living right now. Thank you for watching, and please enjoy some of our other storytelling videos for So the Story Goes.